Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. I was blessed the Lord with all my soul, my heart, and my spirit. How's everybody this morning? I know anyone asked that. <laughs> I caught myself. <laughs> Is everybody blessed today? Oh, that's what I want to hear. Everybody's blessed today. That's a good thing. Because um, we live in the land of the living, don't we? And those who died and passed away, they are gone, and we still have to keep moving on and live the life of the living and try to get to where the believers have gone home. And it's our job to do the same. And each day, there's a journey. Each day, there's a trial. Each day, we go through some difficulties, don't we? Amen. Well, guess what? Welcome to the earth. Because <laughs> being on the earth, we're going to have some problems. And, but don't give up hope. Never give up hope. Because when you give up hope, then you lose the connection of Christ. You fight to keep the hope of Christ no matter what circumstances you're in. And you try to fight to keep the connection no matter how many times you make a mistake. You just keep on getting back up and keep on going. The problem is not getting back up. You fight to stay up and, don't, and learn how not to go back down that way. Because, you know, the enemy got traps out there. And he's trying his best to take God's people, the one he's chosen, to come home with him. So it's our job to fight the good fight of faith. All right? Everybody okay? I know I'm going to keep asking that. Um, let's go to um, 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 5. This will be a short teaching. It's not going to be a long one. Um, if the, if the, if I just do according to how the Lord's wanted. it, it will not be that long. It's going to be direct, and I hope that what you receive out of it, it will, I hope that it will help you in your latter days. Because I'm going to tell you, I got beat up on this teaching. You have to understand, I really had to look at myself when I, when I got this word. And I had to look into where am I at with these issues because we all have them. We all have issues that God is trying to bring healing into the area. You got to understand, a lot of people leave out of this, out of this ministry offended. And they never give God the chance to bring the total healing they need before they leave. I mean, before, because when they leave, they should be sent out anyhow. Because that's how God works things. He sends them out. And when he sends them out, he knows that they, that they went through all the difficulties that they need to go through so that they, when they go out to the world, they wouldn't be a stumbling block to others and to themselves. Because there's a lot of things that goes on within ourselves that we don't tell nobody. And we need to examine our own hearts to make sure that what we're going through, that we be straight honest with God. Because he already knows. He just wants us to give it to him. And when you make the mistake, give it to him and keep going so you can be a better person to yourself and to others. Because that's what it's all about, right? Amen. Loving your brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. This way we can love the world, right? Because if you can't love your brothers and sisters, how can you love the world? Because there'd be a false perception that you show without true love. And that's like they say, agape love. Unconditional. All right? So today's teaching will be on, I know everybody there except me. <laughs> Don't hold on to offense. Amen. And the second part of it is called, Don't Keep Score. <laughs> 
Don't hold on to offense and don't keep score. We have a problem with that. Amen. I had a problem with that. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people have a problem holding on to stuff that we should not even hold on to. It's not ours. And then when we get done with this, I hope you understand why this teaching is called this. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. And it says here, does not behave. Now, he's telling us, we does not, because of love, does not behave. Well, let's, let's go through this. Let's go to verse 1. It makes it much easier. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, have become sound and brass, or a clanging cymbal. Have you heard, ever watched Charlie Brown? Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and you can't figure out what they're really saying, right? Well, that's how we sound like to God when we don't walk in love. We sound like noise to him. You know how you chastise children? And my best example is my son Isaiah. I thank God for Isaiah. He teaches me a lot of stuff. <laughs> he teaches me a lot of stuff that I never seen as a, as a father should see because I didn't have the chance and opportunity to raise my children that are grown today. But God gave me a second chance to see this one here. And now I see all the things I missed out on to be a father. And now I get to understand how the father sees me when I'm whining and complaining and crying and everything else. And you're like, are you done yet? <laughs> so really, this is how we sound to him when we don't have the love in our heart being connected to him. Because we bring a disconnection towards him. Because we're supposed to, Jesus is looking for who? Jesus. Amen? Amen. So it says here, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquities, but rejoice in the truth. Bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, and endure all things. I want to stop right there. We find freedom by demonstrating God's mercy, forgiveness, and love by keeping no records, nor keeping score. Because if we do that, there's not really perfect love. We're only going to love you because you make me feel good. That don't work. We have to love beyond the person. Because you've got to understand something. We're not fighting against people. We're fighting against principalities, powers of darkness, and wickedness hosts in high places. Any day, in any given time, the enemy can use us. We can speak a word that and we don't even know that we're offending somebody. Because we're using our tongue not knowing that at that time we didn't use discernment. Amen? Amen. Let's, and holding on to offense or keeping score of wrongs and rights are deeds to carnal, sinful nature. Better known as the flesh. Which keep us separated or disconnected from the presence of the Lord. We must be sanctified. Now, sanctified means set apart. Set apart from worldly ways. The way that the world thinks is not the way that we should 
be thinking. Because we have a higher govern of thinking. We think as the way that Christ wants us to think, not the way that we see others of the world think. Just like, you know, there's a good illustration of watching TV. We have those heroes, the Avengers. <laughs> they, they always come in after the person because they got offended because they got hurt. So their mother got killed or something, so they got to go back and avenge the world. Anybody get that? Amen. That's the way the world look at it. But that's not how the way Christ looked at it. Christ says forgive. He says forgive. And it's not easy. Because if it's easy, the world can do it. It takes a unique person. Come back here. It takes a unique person that God had ordained and called for to do it. And he called you. He called you. He called me to go forth and do these things. So that we can be a light bearer to the world that don't know the way. Amen? Amen? Amen. We must be sanctified by the Lord's words and truth. And see the wonders that he does through them. Because through the truth, there's wonders that he'll bring about. That things that we don't even know that will be coming towards us. Amen? Amen? Let's go to Proverbs 19. And y'all look all so serious out there. Amen. Loosen up. Do I need to give you some anointing oil? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Proverbs 19, verse 23. The word says here in 23, the fear of the Lord leads to life, and he who has it will abide in sanctification. That means that he will separate himself from the things of the world. He will not be visited with evil. So that if you do these things, evil don't have no power over you. You have power over evil, and it will be submissive underneath your feet. Two of the greatest and most destructive behavior that are born from the flesh are holding on to offense and keeping records. One is sin of judgment. The other is sin of putting conditions on your acts of kindness. So that when you're trying to do things of kindness, but you're just doing it because they're doing it for you, it's not real love. It's not genuine. Amen. You know? You so, hey, you had a job and you got to work with people. And you got to do your part. You got to do your part. Or you ain't going to get a paycheck, right? Because uh, uh, the, the money ain't going to come in. So what you really working for? The money. But when you work for the kingdom, you want to look upon him that he can look upon you with a smile on his face, knowing that, well done, son, you did that one. I see you, son. I see you overcoming that. I see you over here. You're using, you're participating, you're practicing my word that I have given you. You're letting it be settled in you, and you're letting it to work through you. And that's what God wants to do. He wants the word to work through us, even in doubt. Because there's a lot of times doubt will come in. But God, God you see what? Yeah, I know. But what are you going to do about it? What part are you going to do that I'll be glorified in it? Amen? Amen? Let's go to Proverbs 28. Because it really, hey, I, I want to tell you something. Because the Lord put this on me during prayer. What will you be at I mean, with all these accolades and everything that's going on and everything going on in the world and everything, but what will you be at if you knew that your last breath was coming in five minutes? 
Will you think about all the other things that's going on? Or would you put yourself in the place that you're making sure that you're right with him? We don't know when that day can come. And we don't know that when we get ourselves disconnected that we don't get ourselves back in line. Hey, we, some people will hold that for weeks, months, years, and never have their self right to the place that if something happened instantly, they end up in the wrong place and don't know how that happened. Because the enemy likes to use that thing because he used it because he got used by himself when he was insecure in heaven. When he said, I'll exalt myself in the higher place of heaven. And he got kicked out of there because he was insecure in his own assignment. And he got offended because he couldn't be God. So he's trying to be God now to us. And trick all of us to follow his crooked ways. You understand what I'm saying? Satan, because you know what? We can offend God too. You know that, right? By our behaviors. I have some later to show you that. Let's go Proverbs. Everybody's at Proverbs 28, Amen. verse 13. 13. And the word says here, he who covers his sins will not prosper. Now, prosper don't mean only material thing. Prosper could be healing. You can't buy healing. Prosper can be deliverance. You can't buy deliverance. Prosper could be wisdom, knowledge. Understanding. Prosper could be overcoming self. Because he said, as, as I prosper, let my soul prosper. That means my mind, will, and my emotions. Amen? Amen? It says, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. How many of y'all want mercy given unto you? I was always taught, consider mercy so that you can get mercy. Because you never know when you're going to need the mercy. You never know. Happy is the man who is always reverent, but he who hardens his heart will fall into calamity. To hold on to an office, an offense, you first have to judge another. Judging another leaves hardness of heart. How many of y'all have gotten hardened of heart? And you couldn't understand why. Amen. Why you couldn't stand somebody or, and everything. That heart got hardened. And somebody trying to tell you the truth and cannot penetrate in you. Because your heart got like stone. Amen? Amen? And then to keep score, you have to put conditions on your acts of love, mercy, and kindness. This is manipulation. And deception. You aren't what you perceive to be by doing those things. Because if you're manipulating, deceiving, and doing deception, you're really not who you perceive to be. You're supposed to be a child of God, but you're doing these things, and you've got a heart and heart, and God is trying to talk to you, and can't get into there. There's no, really no connection, and he's trying to connect. And so he has to cause a situation to happen to humble you to come to a place. I don't understand. I don't understand that uh, I had to get humble many times by the Lord. Anybody in here? Amen. You, you didn't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and he said, okay. <laughs> and I said, okay, come, little spanking come along. <laughs> okay, Lord, I forg forgive me. What, what was I thinking? And how many times have you but had a heart and a heart, and then you finally let it go, and you say to yourself, what took me so long? I feel better now. I feel free. Why? Man, next time, I ain't going to hold on. And it happens again. Because <laughs> Satan knows. That's when we have to keep connection with the Lord so that the evil will not come. So that we can avoid the evil so that it will not have place within us. Amen? Amen? When you have wronged someone, do you see it as sinning against God? What comes to your mind first? That also goes for when someone wrongs you. 
Do you feel that they sin against you or against God? I'm going to give you a good example. Let's go to Psalms 51. Verse 1. And the word says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your love and kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Now, the, now this was David. David did a bad thing. He went and when he was supposed to go to battle, he stayed home, and he was looking around, lounging around the house, and then he saw Bathsheba out there bathing. So he went into Bathsheba, and then he, she conceived, was conceiving a child. And when he found out these things, he took Uriah and called him out from the battlefield, which was his best guard. It was his first guard in, in the army that he had. And he was his, a good friend of his. And so what he did was, because he was trying to hide his sin, he, he told him to go come home and lay with his wife. Normally, that's what a man would do. But for some reason, he knew better. And he stayed outside and would not go in to lay in his wife. So David said, okay, that didn't work. Let me see what the plan B would be. Now, how many of us have plan A, B, plan B, and plan C, and plan D, E, F? And trying to get back, and, you know. So he, um, so he sent him out to the, back to the army, and he gave instructions to his army. He told the soldiers to pull back when the, the fight gets furious. And as they pulled back, Uriah got killed in battle. So this prayer right here David was talking to was talking about his sin that he did against Uriah. And he said, I sinned against you. He acknowledged it that he sinned against God first because he was in rebellion. And within the rebellion, it brought witchcraft, black magic, and sorcery upon it. And it brought a place that brought conviction upon him. Thank God that David was a, a man after God's own heart because he wanted to get it right. How many of us need to sometimes get it right? Because we love God to, and we want to be close to his heart. And we don't want to miss him when he speaks to us. Amen? Amen. Uh, let's go against... Uh, sin is not wrongdoing against another first, but first wrong doing against God. Because that's what it's all about. We have to get our minds set to that. When we do things, we're first doing it against the Lord. Because when we start thinking like that, then we might, have us, we might think twice about what we're doing. Because as pastor always say about David, he always says that King David, I see the Lord always standing before me. And even when David seen the Lord always standing before him, he still made mistakes. But he knew how to want to get that connection back because he loved the presence of the Lord. And when you love the presence of the Lord, you don't want to be carrying the fence. You don't want to carry hatred. You don't want to carry all the things that comes with Satan. You want to break those things off so you can be free. So that you can smile. And you don't even, sometimes people be looking at you and say, hey, why you ain't smiling? Because this is the way I look. <laughs> Can't go by with that look on the outside. It's my fruit that, that bears. You go by with the fruit that I'm bearing. 
If my fruit stink, then you know where I'm at. But my fruit are good, then you know where I'm at. Can't go by how people look. Because some people are just made that way. I'm telling the truth. They, and, they, and they could be thinking about nothing. It could, like men could be in an empty space, not thinking nothing. They're just being quiet. Or oh, something wrong with him. <laughs> Amen? That's for the women to understand. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> I got to go home. <laughs> Let's go to Galatians 6. <laughs> You know, have you ever been in a place where you're just not doing nothing, you're doing everything, and, and somebody come up to you and say, man, what's wrong with you? And you just, you, you just, what you mean? Man, you're not smiling. Oh, well, here, you want that? <laughs> I'm concentrating. I'm trying to do my job. I just, you know, I just see it, man. Galatians 6, 1. It says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any transgress trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. Hmm. That means the devil can use that, can he? He can use that when you're coming against somebody and he can say, okay, you got a door open. Let me step right on in there. Here, I'm going to throw all this stuff with you. Then I'm going to leave, sit back, and watch. Matter of fact, I got the TV camera just playing it. I'm going to give you all these images. Now watch them. Watch them. Because, you know, imagery brings you to touch them if you accept it. If you accept it, it'll, it'll take place because what's in your heart will come into your hand. But first it had to come to your thoughts. Because they're all connected. Because the thought, because your mind is the engine that operates. That's when we have to bind our minds to the mind of what? Christ. We have to have the, the anointing to break the yoke of what? Bondage. So that we can free our minds so our heart can follow. <laughs> oh, y'all didn't get that, huh? If you free your mind, your heart can follow. Sometimes, your heart don't want to follow what your mind is saying because it's right with God because the enemy can interpret things into your thought patterns. So that's come you have to bind it and break it off so you can free your thought patterns so that your eye gaze can see how God wants to see. So your ears can listen. Because you got to understand something. Sometimes, how many times have you perceived something, you heard something, you heard it wrong? And it wasn't the way the person spoke it. But it's the way you perceived it. Because something else was there telling you something and you believed what that was saying. They said, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> it happens. And you're looking like, man, what's wrong with him? <laughs> Where are we at? We're at Galatians 6, what? Two? Okay, it says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to do, be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So we're supposed to be staying humble. Stop trying to put ourselves, man, I have to look at this. Like I told you, I had to look at this thing, but I'm going, ouch, ooch, oh, man, oh, Lord, I, I repent. And I repent to anybody I offend in his place. That's an open repentance right now to everyone. <laughs> I had my opportunity, and on camera, everyone that I offended. <laughs> I, as I do it sometimes in private, I repent openly. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. And it says, let's go back to four. 
It says, For let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Let him who is taught the word share all good things with him who teaches. Sin is rebellion against God and against his laws and authority. Because when we come against God, we come against his authority and the laws that he set before us. We have the right to judge the fruit of the person and set boundaries on ourselves and others to protect them. That's how we do it. We don't judge that person and condemn that person and hold a hammer down upon them because that's not how God wants us to do things. God has an unconditional love on us. We got to have an unconditional love with others. If you want to understand the godly way, yeah, you separate yourself and you keep yourself, but you don't use your tongue against them and put discord out and bring division into the body of Christ. Amen? Um, yeah, I wrote something right here doing prayer. How Satan can use our tongue to offend, to offend God. He can use it through slander, gossip, lying, exaggeration, coarse gesturing, perverseness, cussing, curses, manipulation, deception, Wrath, bitterness, hurt, hardness, selfishness, pride, arrogance, and anything else that's not God's character. He can use that because that's the world. That's how the world thinks. I mean, it, the world's more open about it now that they don't even hide it no more. Remember how you used to watch, turn the TV on? And they had certain ratings on TV. Those ratings are gone. Man, I turn the TV on. I see what they're saying and what they're doing, and what they're doing in schools to our children. Our children should not even in three, four, five, six. They shouldn't even have no sex education about stuff. They should leave them alone. Let them be innocent children for what they are. But no, Satan has an agenda, and he will bring perversion upon them. I don't like that. That's our children. And we should have a voice to be able to speak up against things that are coming against our children. Amen? Let's go to 1 Peter 3. I remember when um, I was a child, there was a certain time that the TV would just shut off. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, it's time to go to bed. (laughs) All the stages, click, click, click. (laughs) (laughs) And and at 10 o'clock, they would say, do you know where your children are? <laughs> Boy, time have changed. No, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Peter 3. We all there? Verse 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this. That, wait, 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 that's a key word right there. You were called to this. 
This is what we're supposed to be doing. This is why God called us to love despite of how we feel. We can't go by our feelings, man. How many times you went by your feelings and you got with the wrong person? <laughs> oh, come on now. Right, look, look, look at BC. Before Christ, how many of y'all was in the world and you went by your feelings and you was at the club and, 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 the, and the night lights was out and you end up in the morning and you're like, oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> huh? Let's be real about it. Huh? You can find yourself in a place that you thought that at night it was all good because you were full of liquid and, and substance and everything else that bind you up and your eyes were short-sighted, short-sighted so you really couldn't see what you thought you were seeing. <laughs> Didn't have a chance to find out the person you were with. And you find out you woke up with a... Hallelujah, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> but praise God. <laughs> Let's go. Where are we at again? <laughs> First Peter 3, 8. And let's go to verse 6. Am I there? Is everybody there? First Peter 3, 8. All right, let's go. Let's do this again. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may be inherited blessing. How many of y'all want to be a blessing? I got my hand up. I got my other hand up. I got both my feet up. Girl, I love God's blessing, man. It turns me on. Does it turn anybody else on? His blessings? Especially when you don't deserve them? <laughs> it turns you on because he's like that. He loves you unconditionally. He just wants to see you love him back. The way that he loves you, he wants to have that connection. He wants to have that relationship, that love affair, that he knows that you're going to do your part on this earth to be a reflection of what's going on up in heaven. Amen? For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. This is not an easy to do. But like I said before, it was easy, and the world can do it. But God will help us and if we humble ourselves, as we give up our rights to him as Christ gave up his rights to us. Amen? Amen? This is the process of separation from the world. This is the process. Giving up our rights in order to glorify God, to set up part, apart for his presence. And that is our right, to glorify God and get into his presence. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And have, have, when you get in his presence, it seems like nothing else matters. It's like everything else that was there just goes away. It catch you in tears. And what you crying about? Oh, nothing. You don't, you don't understand, you know. You think that every time you're in tears that you're, you're upset. No, so when God touch you, man. You know, there's a song that he caught, caught me one time in the shower one time. And, and he said, I'm killing you softly within you. I'm killing you softly within you. I mean, I'm doing it gently, but I'm killing you at the same time. So that you be more like me. He did it through his love. His love. You know, there's time when you get into a position and you don't know how to do the work yet. And when you get in that place, 
You know, you think you have to do it by according to being strong and, you know, unbreakable. Um, <laughs> but God says, you know, pastor came to me one time. He said, Dave, you got to be flexible in this thing. Because when you're flexible, wherever you've been at, you're going wherever the Holy Spirit leads you to. So you don't have to be hard, because hard, being hard, you'll break. But flexible. You ever see the palm trees when the wind blows? They all bend where the wind's going. Die. <laughs> and then when the storm is done, they come right back up. And in the same position that they're at. And whatever bad limbs that was on there, left. And they come up with all the ones that are full of life in them. You understand? Amen. You have to grow into those positions and learn. You have to learn those things. You're going to make mistakes. Don't get offended when you get corrected. Amen. Just learn from it so you know, know what to do for the next time. And if you blow it again, just say you missed it and keep on practicing. Because what you practice, you become perfect at. Amen? Luke 6. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Verse 36 uh, says, Therefore... Be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. When someone fails to return a favor that you thought they owed you, what do you think? That person's ungrateful after all I've done for them? I'll never help them again. They're a bad person. I hate them. Those things does come out of the flesh, don't they? It sounds like condition. I'll never help them again. Followed by judgment. Deeds of the flesh. That's what we call deeds of the flesh. How about keeping records? of wrongs doing against you. I will never forgive you. You deserve to be punished. I hate you. I will get even. This acts of disobedience against God, against his word, will put, and then the thing is, it will put you into bondage. That's what it will put you into because it hardens your heart and you don't even realize it. And, he, and Satan's playing with that heart now instead of giving it to God and surrendering. It says, um, and it dis disconnect us from God's peace. Because you can have a false peace. You can persuade that you have peace and really have a false peace because you're struggling. It, and it takes you away from the joy of the Lord, that which is your strength. And also it takes you from the key word, forgiveness. Because if, if that's the case, then when Jesus was on the cross, he had the right to kill all of us. But instead, he stayed on the cross and he said these words, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And as he said that, he had access to go to heaven, I mean, go to hell and get out. Because he didn't have forgive. If he didn't forgive, he would have stayed in hell. Because that was the access to getting out. It was the forgiveness. We have to know how to forgive each other. And another thing, we have to learn how to forgive ourselves when we make mistakes. Stop beating ourselves up. You did it, get past it, now don't do it again. Practice not doing it again. So that you can come better person to others and to Christ and to, to yourself. Because in the long run, at the end of the day, you have to deal with yourself anyhow. Nobody else but you. When you stand alone, it's only going to be you. Nobody else. Let's go to Mark 11. Oh, wait a second. I'm not done. 
Yeah, let's go. Mark 11. I'm sorry. Mark eleven twenty two, And the word says, So Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he will have Whatever he says, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Wow, that's deep, though. How, how about prayer? You want your prayers to be answered? You have to have forgiveness. Because that will cut access to prayer, to things that you don't... Like I, always, I always try to tell people, the devil can enrich people through material things. Material things are things that are going to pass away anyhow. But the most important thing is getting the character of Christ. Getting the things that you're struggling on that you're trying to get to. You're trying to hold on, trying to get faith. You need more faith. You need, you need to give more mercy. You need to have more love. How about some revelation? You know, and, and that the revelation that he'll get the glory out of it. Because, you know, in all in all, everything that we, everybody that came in these doors, we didn't make the decision to get here on our own. We was called to this. That means then he thought about us first. And he said, come in, my child. I got something for you. Now, you do it according to my ways, then you will learn how to become like me. And sometimes we get caught up and get caught up in doing things, and we'll, we'll say things that, that think that it's ours, and it's not really ours. We're just caretakers of what belongs to him. We're only caretakers... My Isaiah, my wife, I, I, I'm responsible for them, but they belong to him. My children, they belong to him. I give all to him, even me. I belong to him. So I have to be careful what I take care of and put inside of me. I don't, he took me away from drugs and alcohol. I know that's not no place for me no more to put into this temple. Because they'll hurt this temple and it'll take the things that he governed within me and trusted me to take care of. Because <coughs> this temple here is to glorify him. So when I make mistakes, I need to get corrected quickly so that I don't stay disglorifying, but being <laughs> glorifying him. Because I can give Satan glory too, and you know that, right? Because he loves, he loves to make us look like we're doing, okay, everything's going well, I'm okay. But at the same time, you never know instantly when something, an event can turn. Because that's life. That's life. Where am I? Okay. When someone fails to return a favor that you thought, <clears throat> no, if you are to live a life of fulfillment, we must accomplish it through knowledge. Humility and obedience. You have to. You have to have obedience. For God said, sacrifice and offer is not what I require. But obedience is what I'm looking for. Obedience. Not through offense or keeping score or being bitter or revenge, revengeful. Rather having a heart of mercy, grace, compassion, gratitude. And forgiveness. When you're grateful, you're able, to, you're able to do things according to God's will. Despite what it looks like. Because if God's for you, who can be against you? 
if God's for you. But you got to make sure that he's for you. That means you got to check your heart and your motives and make sure that your right standards with him. And then you go forth and say that scripture. But if you're not right standard with him, then he's not really for you. Because you're doing everything the opposite of what he's asking you to do. Because you got to remember, he asks. He don't try to push it on you. If you don't want to do it, the Holy Spirit will back up. And one thing David said, Lord, do not let your spirit depart from me. Because he knew how valuable it was to have the Holy Spirit connected to him. He knew how important it was that he had enemies out there that wanted to destroy him. Amen? Amen. This is the heart of Christ who forgave us unconditionally. He pardoned us and also our prayers would have access to his throne. That's one thing I would like to have. Access to the throne. Through the throne. Let's go to Ephesians 4. Verse 17. Where it says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk in the rest of the Gentiles' walk and the fertility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with each his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hand, what is good that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt words proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God Christ forgave you. Let's go last scripture, Philippians 2. Like I said, it's not a long teaching. Those who read the Bible, we read these things. But in the condition of the worldly things, and as the world goes through, we sometimes drop it. And the reason why we drop it is because God is trying to show us something about us. And he wants to see if you're going to learn from it and correct it. Because sometimes we can be so hardened that we'll just wave it off and keep on going and, and don't think that has no effect to us. But oh boy, down the road, it'll start showing some weariness and in, in your livelihood. And, and you'll be quick-tempered instead of be slow to speak, uh, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. You'll be quick to anger because of the, the connection has been separated. Amen. So we get, we get crazy with our mouth sometimes. This thing here, boy, this brother here can put, put us right in the hell. Because <laughs> it speaks. It speaks. And that's come, he said, be slow to speak. Be slow to speak. Don't just be a blabbermouth and speak anything that's in your, that your mind thinks. There's some people that can't hold on to what their thoughts are saying. 
A lot of times it's not godly thoughts. I'm just telling the truth because we live in a, 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 a world that is not for God. It, we're in this world, but not of it. We don't belong here. We're just passing through. We're just passing through. Coming from home, leaving home, coming through this place, and going back to home. And rejoicing, dancing. Those at home right now, they're dancing. <laughs> they ain't even thinking about this place. They ain't thinking about none of the stuff that's going on. They, they made it to where we're trying to get to. Like I said, in your last five minutes, and you know that you have, what, five minutes to live, everything else will be washed away. You'll be only thinking about one thing. Examine yourself to make sure that you get yourself right to get home. Period. Unless you don't want to get home. Unless, you want to, unless your heart got so hardened that you lost the belief there's a hell. Philippians 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each one esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming into the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, and that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in the absence. Work on your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasures. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as light in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Amen? Praise God. Father, we come together right now in your precious name, Lord, and we thank you for your word. Lord, I ask that as we go throughout our lives, Lord, that we will remember that we look upon you for what you have already have done. And we hold on to the promises that you have given to us and keep that connection so that anything of offense or trying to keep points from anybody and trying to make ourselves look better than others and everything, Lord, that's garbage we know from you, Lord. But that we will just keep ourselves to look right towards you to make you smile knowing that you are our Father and we are your, your sons and daughters, and that you will guide our, order our steps in according to the way that you want them to be, that you will order our mouth to speak the way that you want them to speak, and that we'll have the heart that will be connected to yours, and that we'll be Christ-like in our doings, home and away, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.